All right, everybody, welcome into our weekly high school preview. I'm going to let these two gentlemen to my left introduce themselves. I'm Braden Lowry. I play center at Edwall. I'm Trevor Gladden. I play linebacker. Now, for those of you who've seen the game last week or seen the <laughs> score, it was 26-20 to 20 win over undefeated Fort Payne in, in truly – as bad of conditions as you consider uh, you could possibly get in a high school game. It was soaking wet. It was lightning. I mean, uh, and we had several delays. But the beautiful part about it was you guys gutted through it. You know, coming into the game, you had several injuries. Uh, during the game, you had even more injuries on some really key players. Um, and then you guys gutted it out for a 26-20 win over Fort Payne. Uh, offensively. What did you guys see from Fort Payne? I knew they they had a pretty good defense coming in. I knew you you guys had a game plan for that. Well, from snap one, they just had us game planned out, and we had to dig up, dig deep, and um, just go to what we had we haven't went to, and we had to figure out what was working and what wasn't. And when we finally figured it out, it all fell in the right place. Um, and I know in that second half of that game, which by the time I got there, it was right around the second quarter when it started the second quarter. As that game went on, dude, you talk about some tough physical yards, and it came right right behind you. Um, they started hitting Trent up there, and I'm talking about, you know, one of those three, four, five yards of carry, six yards of carry. You guys was really had some momentum going in that in that in that second half. Um, but now, um, you know, from the standpoint of the team you're playing, you know, you, you guys had them now. Was it 19 to six at one point? It was actually 19 to three. 19 to three, but then they started coming back. It's a testament to them. Um, yeah. I thought, but you guys overall offensive line did a great job. Um, Gladden uh, on the defensive side of the ball, you know, like it's, like we just said, it's 19 to three. You guys were getting stops and three and outs, and um, I noticed you and Dobbs very active. Uh, what did you guys see from Fort Payne coming into the game on field? No, well, they had a few good key players, so we had to stop them, and we had a few injuries, so we had to just step up and do our thing. And I, you know, Isaiah being out, what did y'all do to counter that? Uh, you know, help that part of the defense because uh, I know he's huge in the run stopping, yes, and sir. then you're facing a 240-pound back. Right. So what? Well, who did y'all have to step up in that role? Uh, Davion, uh, Davion, he stepped up and he did his thing. Um, now, another thing I noticed with Fort Payne, I think it was the drive that put them to 20 when the guy was carrying people in the end zone. Yes, sir. And, I mean, you guys look gassed. You guys look tired. Uh, we, we were very tired. <laughs> it was like 12, yeah. 11, 30, 12 at night. <laughs> we just wore out all You've been the in bad since, <laughs> yes, sir. 6 o'clock. But now, but now, testament to you guys, the next time out, you guys went right back to work yes, sir. and got them off the field. Yes, sir. I, I thought that was huge. Um, going into the game, though, uh, Coach Pearson and them, I know with a kicker like McPherson, you guys had a game plan around not, not having any kind of bend but don't break because it's right. points every time they get around the right. 40, correct? Yes, sir. Um, now, uh, offensively, one more thing I was going to ask you about the game. What did y'all see from their defensive front? Because they had some hosses up there. It was tough, man. <laughs> I mean, they were doing everything. They were long sticking. They were slanting left, slanting right, bull rushing. But mainly they were just quick off the ball and tough. And we had to dig deep in that mud and just figure it out, and we did. And it's a lot harder to, to, to do anything in the mud, but especially, yes, you know, when you got guys that's bigger than you, you know. Yeah. But now this next coming week, I want y'all to talk about Pell City. Have y'all got to watch a lot of things in Pell City yet? Um, we haven't watched not a lot, but we're, tomorrow will be the day that we'll watch everything. Okay. But our coaches told us today in practice it's going to be a good game. It's the most important game of the year because it's the next one. And, I mean, they've, they've had – they're one and four, but they've had some a monstrous schedule, dude. I don't know if y'all have seen their schedule. Yes, I mean, they've played like Huffman, Oxford, you know, some pretty good teams. And if I'm not mistaken, they got about a 320-pound nose tackle that you're going to have fun with. Yes, How much sir. do you weigh? I weigh about right around 200 pounds. Can we get this man to the buffet? <laughs> 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 nah, you, you got this, man. Um, but moving forward, I mean, being 6-0, and um, you get everybody – I mean, most everybody back this week that was banged up. But, I mean, you guys had, you know, injuries uh, across the board during the game. Even Dobbs, correct? I mean, Dobbs is yes, going to be sir. good, though. He's yeah, he's good. good. I mean, if you don't cut Dobbs' legs off, he's playing. Yeah, right? he's, no matter what you got to do, he's That's playing. That's it. But you guys were real active in that game, both you guys. 
because uh, they was eating that defensive line was eating up that line, and you guys were definitely making some plays. And Hunter Cox had to step up too. He's oh yeah, middle linebacker yeah, because middle Logan, linebacker got, hurt. Mm-hmm. Logan got hurt, so Cox stepped up and he did his thing. He did, man. Yeah. Um, Speaking of Cox, we had a sophomore step up in the fullback role, Jacob Sanford. Yeah. And, I mean, it was his first game actually ever playing the game. And for it to be a high of a stage like Fort Payne, he did really good. Battle of undefe- undefeateds at midnight. <laughs> so, <laughs> you don't get no bigger than that. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you guys sitting in with us. Um, I know you all ain't seen much on Pell City, so we can't talk about much. But being 6-0 and moving forward, Again, that's a non-region game, but it's still a huge game because you, you want to keep your perfect season intact. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. All, right. All right, our next game is going to bring us to Hoax Bluff versus Asheville. And as you can see, I got a panel of Asheville people and Hoax Bluff people here, which is always fun. Uh, we've had to separate... Kevin and Will already. That's about to go to blows early. <laughs> they finally calm back down. Uh, but Kevin Moore, uh, Dale Jackal, and Mr. Will Clemens is sitting in with me. The Terminator, Will Clemens. <laughs> so Hoax Bluff, three and two, coming off a, a, a big rivalry win of, of Glencoe, where they kind of went through the motions once they got up, you know, on Saturday morning. The game was actually played on Saturday, 35 to six. Will, uh, talk about going into that game. You know, I know y'all had seen on film, Linko was really struggling, but uh, it don't matter when it's a rivalry game. It's go time. Oh, yeah, Coach Rob tried to uh, tell us that all week that, you know, Glenco, like you said, they've been struggling a little bit, but with it being a rivalry game, it's a, it's always a good game. It don't matter who if we're bad, if they're bad, or whatever. It's always going to be a good game. So we had to prepare as if, you know, it was going to be a tough game. And did you get a lot of younger guys some looks that game to get oh, to play? Yes, sir, we did. We uh, I think it right after halftime, I think. They, they went in and uh, done their thing. And Pretty much from then on out? Yes, sir. So, in other words, what you're saying is y'all didn't give up the six. It was the younger guys, right? It was. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch the film, it, it hits the dude right in the chest. He was in the right spot, too, but it just didn't, just didn't work out. I think we need to have some leadership step up and yeah. get a hold of some of the younger guys. Dale, you tell me what you seen during that game, brother. You was there. Well, I will say that Blinko did play their heart out. I will give them, you know, give that to them. They did play their heart out because when one man went out getting hurt or whatever, another one stepped in and did the same job. I mean, they did play their heart out. They're going through a hard time, but uh, I have to admit that everybody was all in clapping with what they did. That's good. And that was both Holtz Bluff and Glencoe's side. That's I mean, good. We, we, Raised each other up. I will that's say good. that. That's good. And in a rivalry game like that, that's, mm-hmm. that makes it even better. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that's good. But now this week's opponent, they're playing the Asheville Bulldogs. AshevilleAthletics.com there, Mr. Kevin. Well, yeah, for Host Bluff, this is a very important game because uh, they had a successful win over White Plains and then had a couple unfortunate losses to uh, uh, Aniana and Aniston. And Hoax Bluff, and I, because I, I keep up with that region pretty, Hoax Bluff is still in contention for winning the region championship, um, and still playoff berth is, is trying to get that either the first or second spot for the for the to host the, the first round. And and, and, I, and I like Coach Rob. I've known him for years. He's a great guy. Uh, but this game is also important for Asheville because we ne- Asheville needs to win this game because a loss for Asheville will probably mathematically eliminate Asheville from the playoffs. Although I'm not. Real 100% positive of that, but but regardless, Asheville needs to win this game uh, for that reason. And this is uh, it's kind of funny because uh, there's mixed them up because there's a guy I went to high school with, uh, his son plays for Hoax Bluff, so so we have the Asheville inside the Hoax Bluff. No, I'm kidding, but but he but of course he's all, he's all my, uh, but for to, for Asheville to have a chance to beat Hoax Bluff, we got a yeah. whistleblower, huh? We got a whistleblower. Well, he's full of hot air. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about the guy I went to high school with. I know, so. I know, I know. Just... Um, but for us to, to have a chance to get Hoax Bluff, we've got to do the obvious things. We've got to uh, contain the running game. We've got to eliminate, as far as us, we've got, we've got to worry about us. Uh, not have uh, uh, mindless penalties, you know, all sides, uh, and make sure to uh, not turn the ball over. And, and one thing, too, uh, 
And I know Coach Rob for years he likes to run the ball, which means yeah. this is going to be a pretty this is going to be a pretty quick game. So every possession, <laughs> every possession that Asheville, Asheville has, it's you know it's important. We might we you know depending on how well they, uh, uh, Host Buff runs the ball, we could get anywhere from four to eight possessions, just depending. Uh, uh, but like I said, every possession is important. That the, uh, now the games at Asheville, I hope that holds somewhat of an advantage, but it's going to be a very tough challenge for Asheville to. Yep. Come out and let me ask you a question. What what all have they gotten to work on on this off week? Do you know? Well, the main thing they uh, just went back to fundamentals. Just worked on the fundamentals of the game uh, and get some players. We had some players that have been banged up for the last several weeks. Uh, you get them healthy and, and just and just improve some little you know tweaks and things here and there that need to be you know taken care of that, to help them be successful on Friday night. Are they game planning for the Terminator? Well, uh, their game plan is everybody. They treat everybody the same. So uh, well, this guy, this guy ends careers right here, man. So. <laughs> hey, well, hey, call uh, Coach Simmons and text him right now and tell him that uh, we got Will here in house, and uh, if we need, you know, whatever we need to do, I mean, if we need to put him in a van, take him away, or whatever. Well, I know, I know, I know Coach Simmons. A couple times he was trying to work. He was working on his rebounding because he, I think he's won a rematch. Ah, so. oh, <laughs> he don't want a part of that. Oh. <laughs> He don't want a part of that. Did he see that video where I said that? Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, well, I don't know if he has or not, but okay. I'll, I'll make sure to make sure he sees it. So he'll get a kick out yeah, of it. Yeah, I know. Sure. He'll think, he think it's funny. He'll think it's funny. Yeah. No, but for real, man, this, uh, this is a huge game for both 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 teams, really. I mean, you guys keeping the playoff birth alive. These guys still fighting to host the first round of the playoffs. This is uh, this is going to be a game. Like you said, this game's going to move pretty quick. And I didn't realize until last week how big this region is because you got you guys – Jacksonville, Oneonta, Aniston, and Cherokee County. You got five, and, and of course, you know, I'm, don't eliminate Asheville, uh, but you got five or six teams competing for seven for four spots. That could make a de- any one of them yeah. to make a deep run in the playoffs. I still say that Jacksonville Hoax Bluff is going to come down Cleveland to the region. County. You know what now? And you got Cleburne County. Well, I'm, uh, Cleburne County's kind of they're kind of uh, they're still in this region. I know, but they're right there at the bottom. So I, if but uh, but you know anything can happen. So. This is kind of like the 7A Region 3 of 4A. It is, really is. Um, well, Will, appreciate you sitting in, brother. Yes, sir. Thank you. Dale? Of course, you know it. Kevin? Yeah. Hope you have a, hope everybody plays injury-free Friday night. So. Uh, that's, that's one thing so. we do. We hope nobody gets hurt. All right, everybody, we're going to move on to our next game. Uh, we're going to talk about Fife and Sand Rock. Uh, Fife coming off a huge 35 nothing win against their uh, bitter rival, Plainview, last week. Um, I think that game was uh, cut short a little bit by the weather. Um, David, I know you've seen Fife play this year. Um, they got uh, Sand Rock coming into town this week in a huge region game. Sand Rock traditionally is a pretty good team. Um, they're you know, one of those teams you can't overlook. Yeah. Um, what do you tell us about what you see in that game? Well, and I'm sure at this point in the season, this is time where Coach Benefield, the, the stuff that you're working on, getting smaller and smaller. You know, you're getting ready. You're you're perfecting things at this point. And yeah. uh, Fife, you know, they they have not been in many close games. They did get a good challenge a couple of weeks ago, and were able to uh, kind of see what they had a little bit, which is good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now, as you go through these weeks, you know. You don't know how many close games you're going to be in, but uh, you know yeah. you, you've got a list of things you want to work on, and that's kind of your focus at this point. Is you're just focusing on, you know, how we do on third and short, how we're going to do on what situational plays. You know, yeah. first and ten, we got a set of plays defensively. Mm-hmm. How are we going to do coverages? How are we going to do when people go into big packages and stuff against offenses? So you're, you're you're kind of working on yourself on different situations right now because yeah. a lot of times when you're not getting challenges in games, mm-hmm. you've got to find ways to challenge yourself and. Yeah. Those situational things are probably the things that they're looking at going into these weeks. Yeah, because right now it's probably about the time you want to start thinking about the playoffs. Um, I know it's kind of early, but, you know, if you can, you, you want to try to get these things under control because once you hit the playoffs, I mean, it's win or go home. Yeah, from there. absolutely. And, you know, you, you don't want week, you know, round three of the playoffs to be the first time you have to come up with a third and two call for your lives. You know, exactly. so right now is the time when you can see what you've got in those situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and Kim? Also, too, in uh, – at this point in the year, as they're trying to prepare for the playoffs, I'm just going to ask this. Now, is this something at this time you know, like to be a challenge? You know, new wrinkles in the offense, possibly maybe a trick play that they might have to use in the playoffs. Would they go ahead and run that during the game and have that on film so that way something that team's got to be prepared looking for that? 
or is that something they just have? We're going to wait and hold that until we absolutely have to have it. Well, and that depends. I don't know what type of coach Coach Minifield is. Some people want to show that on film and want people to see that. Some people want to say, well, I got five plays here in my, my, my back pocket you've never seen before and you don't know what's coming. And sometimes that can be scarier than seeing on film. Yeah. Sometimes. yeah. Coach, knowing Coach Minifield, he's probably got several plays in his back pocket. As, as a coach, I would hate to just – not have that on film and just throw it out there in the middle of you know playoff at a crucial point because mm-hmm. you, you got to have confidence in your players but at the same time if it doesn't if it doesn't work you got to have a backup plan you yeah. do well and any before you ever see a play on the field that thing's been run thirty times oh, yeah. on a practice field you know <laughs> so they're, 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 if they throw it out there on the field they're confident that they they've got it down yeah so. oh yeah this is true. Ohachi and uh, Ohachi and West End. Um, Ohachi's coming off a big win uh, against uh, I think Leeds is four A, uh, class four yeah, A Leeds, um, forty eight to seven. I was at this game for uh, the first two quarters and one play of the third quarter. <laughs> uh, Long enough. <laughs> yeah, Ohachi came out. Um, that was my first time seeing those guys play, and uh, Dominique Thomas is the real deal. And uh, their quarterback, I can't remember his name, he is another player you want to watch out for. Because if you focus on Dominique and try to stop him, they're going to hand the ball off to number eight. I can't remember his name. Um, he is He's deadly. I think he, uh, in the first half, he rushed for two touchdowns himself, or maybe three, two or three. And uh, him and Dominique, they were just like a one-two punch. And, um, I mean... I don't know what know what else to say. I pretty much left Ohachi speechless uh, after seeing it because I was just like, "Wow!" Uh, so you had a chance, and Mr. Green, this is for you, brother. You had a chance to visit the Creek Bank. I did, and I was looking for that creek. I didn't see where I didn't find that creek, but I did go to the Creek Bank. I think I, the rumor has it it's back behind the stadium, and when and it's real dark, and all of a sudden you're looking at it, trying to find a parking place, and all of a sudden you drove your car off in it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but did you see the mysterious fog? I did not. I, like I said, I left at the beginning of the third quarter when uh, Ohachi ran the open the kickoff back four touchdowns. Now, now Leeds, <laughs> yeah, I was really impressed because Leeds, is, you know, they're, they, they've they been down the last couple of years, but they got a new coaching staff and they were Coach mm-hmm. Hood that was formerly at Clay Chopwell. Yep. And I knew it was just, and it's going to be a matter of time for Leeds to just back, back up where they oh, belong. Yeah. Yeah. But, but for Ohachi to step out of region play and to play two classifications up <laughs> and to beat them 48-7, to seven, I and now now they got a challenge this week with West because West End's got a pretty good little quarterback. They do. And, they do. Uh, they he he can sling it. So that's yeah. going to be a. Yeah. Um, and one thing about this old Hatchie Leeds game, uh, the score was seven nothing at the end of the first quarter. Ohachi scored thirty five unanswered points in the second quarter. Um, like I said, I, I, I hadn't seen anything like it. But like you said, uh, West End's coming. Uh, well, Ohachi's going to West End, and um, West End can score a lot of points. Um, so this is one of those teams they can be dangerous if you don't you know if you don't watch out for them. That used to be a pretty decent little rivalry years ago back when they were both in two A back in the early I want to say the late eighties early nineties they used to play on a regular basis so uh, that but they're back in the same region again. Uh, behind the camera here, yeah. peanut gallery, uh, Eli Pierce. Average Joe Sports Talk Player of the Week. I was I was I was headed that way. <laughs> yes, Eli Pierce is our Average Joe Sports Talk uh, Player of the Week. Uh, we will be at the Gridiron. Are we doing it in Gaston? Yes, sir. It's gonna yeah, be Gridiron Gaston. in Gaston tomorrow night at six thirty. Um, well, be there. Drops it'll probably be tonight. Oh yeah, it'll be tonight. <laughs> <laughs> tonight. It's uh, six thirty at Gridiron in Gaston. Uh, David, you've seen on you play. I mean, you know about West End. Yeah. Tell me what you what you might expect in this game. Well, no, Hatchie, you know, they, we were just talking about Fife. Oh, Hatchie does things very similar to what Fife does, and they do it in different ways. But they do. the has oh, got a lot of eye candy back there. You know, they're going to move a lot of people around, and they're going to, you know, motions and sets going on. But they're the same thing. You know, Dominique Thomas can get 10 yards a lot of time before he gets touched. Both of those <laughs> offensive lines are just unreal, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they're road graders. And yeah. when uh, offensively you can get downfield like that and you can make that much push on the defensive line, it's hard to get anything going. Uh as far as West End, uh, we played West End in the spring game when I was still coaching last year, and uh, 
West End's a talented team, and I mean, the, the coach out there has got them throwing the ball all over the yard, which you don't see a whole lot in 2A football. No. No. Uh, so I can, if I were to guess, I would say that Coach Martin is telling those boys that that, uh, that secondary better get ready because they're about to see something they hadn't seen all season long. And mm-hmm. That's a good thing to see. You know, you, you, you get used to seeing the same type of offense, I formation, wing tee, yep. offenses in 2A football, and all of a sudden you go up against a team that's going to spread it out everywhere and throw the ball across the yard. Eli Pierce, the kid, you give him room, he can put up 300 on you. So, you know, the, with, exactly. with, the, with the receivers they've got, you know, they're used to running that quick strike offense and they're going to be able to move the ball around. Uh, they run the spread, but a lot of the a lot of the stuff they do is almost West Coast type thing. But, yeah. uh, you know, but still, just to be anybody that can throw for that many yardage in high school football, you know, mm-hmm. that's a talented kid and that's something worth respecting. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how Hatchie's defense adjusts. Mm-hmm. You're right about that. All right, um, we're gonna move on to our next game. Uh, we got Westbrook uh, hosting Ramber in a huge, huge um, region game. Um, Westbrook co- coming off an off week um, after they suffered their first loss against Ohatchee. Um, Ramber's undefeated. They're tied with um, Ohatchee right now for first place in the region. So this is a huge game, huge game for those uh, for those guys. Uh, David? Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, the, this game's going to be big for one thing because Westbrook, they need to win this game to have a possibility of having a home field in the playoffs. This this is, you know, Rambert's going to probably play Ohatchee for the one seed later on this season, but this right mm-hmm. here, for all likely purposes, for the two seed right here. So uh, either way, Westbrook, to get the two seed, needs to win this game. So, you know, I haven't seen Rambert, but I've heard good things about them from people oh, yeah. that have and from uh, coaches that have seen them this year. Uh, Westbrook, this is a good time to rebound. You know, they've had a week off. You know, like I said before, anytime you've got a week off to go back and work on yourselves, it's a good thing. You know, mm-hmm. you can you can self-scout, which can be the most important thing as a coach in football, is to go back and watch film on yourself mm-hmm. and see what you would do if you were playing yourself. You know, you right. go watch about yourself on offense and the defensive coaches and say, well, in this set, we have a tendency to do this. You know, and offensive coaches, they can go back and watch their blocking scheme, see how they're pulling, see if anybody's able to key on their guards or their tackles, how they're blocking. So it's a real good time to go back and work on the fundamentals right here. And, uh, you know, I, I have a feeling Westbrook can come out ready to play. Okay. Well, a few weeks ago I had a, a, a rant of epic proportions regarding Nashville. <laughs> and this is uh, – and, and I'm using that same speech, different team this week because uh, uh, I've got some free relatives that coach in South Alabama – and they, they Rambert, they they come to hit you. I have to use mm-hmm. they they will hit you. <laughs> I know. And and uh, they like to play defense. And uh, this is Westbrook's chance to prove how tough they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, because Ram, like I said, you know Rambert, I put Ohachi Rambert about that, right in that, almost in that same category there. That's going to be uh, a huge game. With yeah, and, <laughs> and and Westbrook needs to come out. And they need to hit, they need to hit these guys in the mouth right off the, right as the kick off, mm-hmm. uh, and and, uh, and not be intimidated. Uh, and not you know not you know not turn the ball over and they they, they need they need to take care of Ramber uh, and put this game to bed because uh, mm-hmm. because for them to to even host a game they've got to win this game yeah uh, because if, if if they lose I'm afraid they'll be too far behind as far as tiebreakers and all that goes you know because because Ramber's not going to lose twice they might lose the you know they, they well they'll, more likely they'll probably lose to Ohatchee mm-hmm. uh, but they won't lose twice in the region yeah. uh, standing so so this the so whispers they got they got to stand up and be me in this week yeah yeah it's going to be a huge game uh, Ramber is actually coming off a pretty good win against Wally which is the yeah pretty good one uh, eight school beat them twenty four eight last week so um, I'm sure Westbrook I'm sure that stadium's going to be uh, pretty packed and it's going to be pretty loud so. Um, I mean, let me tell you, the one time I've been to Westbrook this year, that student section gets going. Oh, they do. They, they do. You know, it, they do. It, as much as you can block out the extra going on behind <laughs> you, it, it's hard to hear a metal plate being banged on over and over again you know, in the student section. <laughs> yeah. And in a two A stadium, that kind of reverberates. Yeah, that's, the that's way that stadium is built. Yeah. yeah. I, I can hear because Asheville started something similar, and that Hayden Coker, he's leading the charge. Got those guys up there. <laughs> It'll get on your freaking nerves, man. I'm sitting there, I'm like, you know. And they, they hit it so hard one time it broke and I, and and it couldn't use it anymore. I thought, well, thank God. And so, but but as far as the you know student crowd, they need that. Yeah, yeah, and, the, and that's going to be key in this game. I, I do believe. All right, uh, we're going to move on to the next game: uh, Southside and Douglas. Um, two teams that desperate need a win. Um, Southside traveled to Helena last week and uh, lost a tough one in Douglas. Uh, I think they played Brantley Mountain, won that game. Um, just two teams um, in, in Region 5 and Region 6 that desperately need a win. Uh, 
Um, we're going to move on to uh, Central Clay and Mortimer Jordan. Um, another huge game in a uh, uh, region game for Central Clay. They uh, lost a heartbreaker to Jasper uh, last week uh, in, in double overtime. I was able to catch the end of this game on TV. It was televised. And, uh, man, I don't know what to say. That was that was two tough uh -huh. teams going, going, I mean, going head to head. It's like neither one of them would give up. Like nobody would break. It's like. I watched the game just like you did, and you know Clay Central had the lead. I think at one point in the fourth quarter, they, yeah. and they came up tied it, tied it, and uh, and like I say, you know, I'm not going to question Danny Horn going for two because it's one of those things where, you know, like we talked about last week, it's one of these non-region games that's preparing you for the playoffs, and they're hitting their button heads. You know, yeah. he probably just like, hey, I want to go for two and get this win, and get out of here, get out of here. So yeah, try to escape me, you know, injuries or whatever might come up. Um, yeah, and Mortimer Jordan, they beat Hayden last week 48-6. And uh crazy thing about this game, Mortimer Jordan beat Clay Central in the regular season last year. And Clay Central came back and beat them in the playoffs to go to the 5A state championship. Um, David, you got anything on this well, game? Well, this, this is just the type of games you want to play in. I mean, for, for Central Clay, for teams you know like Central Clay, like Ohatchee, like Fife, these are games you want to play in where you actually get a, get a feeling of where you're at at this mm -hmm. point in the season. Because a lot of times some of these games you're playing – you know, you can self-evaluate on film, but a lot of times you don't necessarily know where it's putting you in the, yeah. in the scheme of things for the season. Mm -hmm. These two games right here, Central Clay's can come out knowing exactly where they're at and what they need to do for the next five to six weeks to uh, get there because, uh, you know, th these are the type of games you're going to see in the second, third, fourth round of the playoffs. Nice. Right here. These are the type of teams you're going to see, <laughs> and right now you want to be able to go back and look on film and see where you're at compared to these teams. So, uh, yeah. you know, the win, lose, or draw, you know, 35-34 is a tough loss, but, yeah. uh, you know, these are the. This is what you're gonna go back and look at, and see how you went up against these these type teams. Yeah, and I'm sure when they scheduled this game, both coaches, this is probably why they scheduled this oh, game yeah. to see where their teams are in the midpoint of the season, and second half of the season they say, okay, this is what we did wrong. We can fix this going forward and going into the playoffs because these two, I'm guaranteed they're going to see each other again. I, I know coaches hate looking ahead, but I see a little. I see a little setup down the road. Let's say, what if Jasper and Etowah play in the playoffs? Coach Holiday would be against his former team. That would yeah. be that would be an interesting matchup. Yeah, well, I, I, I think I brought that up with oh. most, you know okay. not on camera, but okay. we've talked about it, that uh, that being a possibility. Um, last game we're going to touch on uh, is Gaston City. That is that James Clemens uh, Thursday night. Um, Gaston City's coming off an off week. Um, James Clemens tied for first during the three-way tie for first in the region. Um, their only two losses have been to uh, non-region two non-region opponents, uh, Grayson Georgia and Clay Chapel. Um <laughs> Two pretty good teams. Um, this is a huge game for Gaston City. They're still in playoff contention. Uh, they're not completely out of it, as people may say that but they're not. Uh, from a mathematical standpoint. They can win out and still make the playoffs. Um, um, I know the guys had a practice yesterday. Uh, from, from what I heard, it was a pretty good practice. It was uh, a lot of a lot of good attitudes, uh, high spirited practice. So uh, hopefully we can get in there uh, Thursday and, and and get that first win for Coach Smith. Yeah. David, well, you know, I mean, like you said, if the spirits are up and the players are still playing, you know, this mm -hmm. is the time to turn it around because this is the way. It's one of those times that you can put your back against the wall mentality. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you may have people outside of your group. Uh, as Coach Smith, I think, likes to call them the, the roaches. The roaches, yeah. You may have the roaches <laughs> out there, you know, scuttling everywhere and talking all their talk. But you know, yeah. right now, you got your back against the wall. And this is one of those times you can actually say it is us against the world. You know, mm -hmm. nobody believes. You know, you got people talking this and that. You know, but the only ones that have control over it is the players in that locker room, and the coaches exactly. in that locker room, exactly. and uh, you know, they've got a. They've had 13 days since their last game between that game and this game. And, uh, you know, this is one of those times where uh, a team can go in there and shock the world, you know, and it can make a world of difference. You know, you, you get you get one team believing. Mm -hmm. you know, however many guys are on that roster and coaches, everybody believing in one goal, one common goal. And uh, this could be a time where they come together and make that goal happen. So I'm excited to see how Gadsden City is coming out outside of this uh, off week. You know, one interesting thing about this game, too, is the other two teams that are tied for first are playing each other. So, Gadsden City could really shake up this region with a uh, win Thursday night. Kevin, you got anything? All I'm going to say is the road to 5-5 five and five starts Thursday night. I like it, man, man. Because like they get one straight out and they and, uh, and, and uh, Clay Chapel there at the end. 
Of course, it's an Ranger game, but uh, that that a game that, that could help, help catapult them, them in the playoffs. It could. It could help them in the playoffs, and we get out to a tiebreaker situation. That game will definitely help um, as well. So, um, guys, this is our uh, high school preview uh, for this week. Um, Tomorrow night we'll be at Gridiron and Gas and at 6.30 for uh, Eli Pierce, player, uh, Buddy Indiana Ford, uh, Maverick Joe Sports Talk Player of the Week. And Wednesday night we'll be at Chick-fil-A of Gasson for the Coach Ali Smith Show from 5 to 7. And we're out.